I'm definitely going to have to have my son build me a new one. This one, this thing's starting to lag. It must be. All right, uh, good morning, guys. Canada Tortoise Capital, it is, uh, what is this one? Foundations Q&A, uh, June 25th, 2023. This is like session 11-ish or so. Uh, let's do a quick check-in. Uh, Greg, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I really enjoyed the material and um, happy to be part of it. Marlon, how are we doing, sir? Doing good, doing good. Just trying to get back in, uh, trying to pick up uh, where I left a few weeks back. And uh, yeah, I just need to get a, get in the rhythm of, uh, you know, back to back to this whole learning phase. Uh, so no, but yeah. looking forward to it. Good. And Chun Long, how are we? Yeah, very well. Uh, just quickly uh, talk about um, before you come in, Last year, I do a lot of macro learning. So this time, I decide to put more structure in my learning. That's why I registered the foundation course. Decide to attend the yep. Q and A. Oh, well, good to see all you guys. Um, yeah, uh, before the recording, we were talking about uh, the book coming out and what to do about protecting intellectual property. Now, if we expand the aperture to the world, um, and maybe we get different kinds of people than those who have the uh, uh, foundations of ethics that you find at the Thorpe Institute. Uh, here's the way I look at that. Uh, no matter what you do, stuff can will get out. Even the... Uh, you know, the uh, the PRX um, uh, currency system that they briefed, the same day that they did a fee-only uh, workshop, there was a copy of it on the, on the web. So somebody in that group recorded the screen and then immediately pirated it. So... What are you going to do? So Van was worried about that all the time, and so he never wanted to do the online uh, outreach. He was very strict about that. And I've noticed myself that uh, some of my courses, uh, pirated versions, have gotten out there, you know, being sold for one-tenth. Uh, and there's a couple ways of, of doing that. Number one is I'm just, I'm so, uh, I'm so clumsy that inevitably I'm going to say something that's a little bit wrong. And if they don't know that, or they don't have, you know, follow-up questions, then they're going to do something wrong, and karma will get them. And also, I think the universe just gives you what your intention is. Whatever intentions you act with, the universe says, oh, well, that's what you want. I'm going to give you more of that. And if people are thieving, they're going to be stolen from. So I just take the position of, look, I'm just uh, an action verb here. I'm collecting you know, insights and whatever from my perspective, and I do my best to say what I see and do what I do uh, and give it back to the world to empty my bowl. Uh, I'm happy with that. I get what I get. And uh, karma will come to those. Anyway, you know, 30 different times I've actually, like, followed up on those things, and I typically send a note to those folks now and say, hey, look, I notice that you're selling my a recording of my core workshop from 10 years ago for $49. If you just ask me, I would I would give you 30% of that $1000 course just for selling it correctly. So if you use your outreach, I'll give you 30% of whatever you whatever you sell it for. Or I'll give you 70% of what you sell it for. Since I'm getting nothing from you now, how about you just get it with my endorsement? And oh, by the way, I have 50 other courses that you could do that with too. So why are you why are you thieving? And uh, and then I've seen some guys that like 
take my uh, proprietary indicators and try to code them and then sell them. And I said, hey, you know, you almost got it right, but if you just asked me, I would have given you the code. And I've got 50 other indicators that you might want to sell and as a licensed tool dealer. What do you think? Uh, so far, I've gotten zero out of 30 responses on that. So I believe that people are not doing it for the money primarily, although they think they are. I think there's some feature of our human nature that, you know, just you, you got to take a crap in your own bed, I guess, if you can. You know, I don't know. So, uh, so I'm not going to worry about it. And, you know, in the book, I've, there's a lot of good things that are in that book, but not all the secret sauce. I mean, there's not enough room for everything. And it gets, it'll get people about anywhere from 20 to 80% of the way, depending on how much work they put into it. And if you are diligent about reading the book and applying the principles and doing your own work, you can, you, you'll be good. You, you, all you may need is the book. Uh, if you want to fast track towards learning, I think what we really offer uh, is something I'm going to talk here in a minute about theory and practice uh, and cooking versus recipes, dating and marriage. I think there's a, there, we are action verbs, and it's not the object. It's not the noun of the book or the system. It is the implementation and application. So... I'm gonna. I'm 65, and I'm just not going to worry about it, and I'm not going to follow up, and I'm not going to get lawyers involved because, really, is that what we need more of is more lawyers? So I'll just put it out there, you know, and if, uh, if 10 million people stole my stuff and sold it on the web to, uh, to 100 million people, some percentage of those 100 million people uh, are going to want to ask questions. So, okay, find me, and then if it works for you, uh, let me, you know, pay pay money for value and uh, at some reasonable fee, and uh, and I'll, I'll take that. What I should have done long, long ago was just say, look, just send me 1% of the difference I make, and that would have been a much better, much better position. <laughs> Or whatever you want. I, I, and then to your, great, your point about... A great yeah. take, because it's like yeah. advertising, almost in a way. Because if, if someone sees your material... It really is. There. Yeah. Hey, this stuff is good enough to steal. In fact, that may be the next YouTube short that I do. And say, hey, this stuff is good enough to steal. So there you are. You know, a thousand thieves can't all be wrong, right? <laughs> Find out what all the buzz is about. <laughs> Why are they trying to steal it? That's funny. Yeah, so um that that's going to be that's going to be my position on that. And then to your point about putting a tip jar on the tour, yeah, you know, I actually followed through with that this morning. That's why I was a couple minutes late. I was finishing up putting a uh some token amount on the YouTube channel which I'm going to start working a little bit harder on just to put uh like the market minute and the daily sniper minute. So each one of those is less than a minute and put a little subscription on there for folks that find it helpful. But yeah, I think you're right. You know, the, the tip jar certainly, uh, I, I can do that. It's just a matter of doing it on, on putting it on tortoise capital and, uh, we'll get that. We'll get that done. That's, that's a good idea. No, it's good to see everybody. Hey, uh, good to see you, Jeff. You want to do a quick check in before we, before we get cranking? Yeah, is this... Uh, I'm thinking not. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, this one's Foundations Q&A Creativity. It'll start at 10. Oh, cool. Yeah, I just want to make sure I didn't miss it. Uh, so I'm off today. Yep. Every other Sunday I'm off. So just thought I would yep. see what you guys were doing. But uh, yeah, I'm in Utah. Yeah. Everything's great here. And I'm actually just working on finishing up my homework for uh, Creativity. So you kind of caught me off guard. Cool. Yeah. All righty. I'll... Uh, I'll I'll uh, get on, get on with it here. All right, this one's for Marlon. Uh, was visiting India to take care of a father. I hope everything good. Everything's good. Getting back into the rhythm of trading, and I noticed that I don't have a standard way of reengaging with the market after taking a break. 
In keeping with the theme of doing routine things routinely, how about some best practices for handling onboarding? And is this experience exposing a lack of process and preparation when it comes to handling trading breaks? Uh, yes, it, it really does. And so uh, what I would say is uh, process is everything. And, and here's what athletes do is warm up and cool down. Uh, and so uh, to restart trading, what I would say starts with how you finished the last trade. So whatever you did at the end of the last session of trading should already put you in position to be ready to trade next, right? You get to closure. So you want to make sure that you take care of all that stuff, which is including doing the after action review and creating the documents and artifacts and putting it in your trading journal and updating all the records and cleaning up the work site before you go home from work. You know what I mean? So with that, do that process right there is the front end of, of what you need to do when you're going to restart. And now there's just some amount of time in between the end of the last session and the start of the new session. Uh, was, that, was that zero seconds between two trades or one second between trade one and trade two interdate? Yes. So we got to get to the zero state after each trade. We have to get to the zero state after each session after each period of time, after each monthly process review. So whatever it is, the job's not done until we've, you know, put the horse in the barn and taken care of him and properly cooled him off and, uh, and get everything ready for the next session. Then there's, uh, then there's what you do to restart. And so if there is a, if this was a day trade and this was the opening right here, then there's things that I got to do back here, starting here, that are all the prep pieces, the planning and preparation that I've got to do so that at the moment of the open, I'm ready to execute. All right? And when I'm done with all that, I'm going to be constantly assessing. So, in, in one sense, the simplest answer to all this is uh, P, P, E, and A. You know, the old plan, prepare, execute, and assess in everything that we do as the top-level process. But what I would say is that uh, if you take care of the, you make this a process, and you make this a process, now all we've got to do is account for the time in between. And it might take a little bit more time to warm up and review, you know. And and I, I like to use some kind of model like this. It says, look, my, at my top level process, my, my purpose in doing everything is why am I trading again? And how fast can you go through that to review the facts about why you're trading and what the purpose is? So that should be, your you know, your mantra and your vision and your top level process should never be out of mind. And then there's things that you do to go through your plan, prepare, execute, so that at the point where that plan and strategy meets the world, uh, you're always ready to go. And we want to make that friction free, right? Another way to look at it, if I did bottoms up, I would just say, look, my foundations are here. And I'm building up to the point where now I can see far what I need to do, and off I go. So what I would say then, the specific answer to your question is, I, as I would go through, uh, I would document your process. I want you to uh, create an artifact. You know, I want you to emerge from where you are, which is what you did with your question. You've expanded your aperture now your point of view and your perspective and you considered all of these things and now you're going to uh, explore that space to find things that work and then you're going to converge 
until you make what really works for you into a bulletproof artifact and that artifact is going to be part of your process that you do routinely in your execution trading space and then in your scouting space and then by sharing that in a community of practice with other people and their perspectives you're leveraging the power of what we're doing right so your question was a good one it tells me that you were alerted hey I need to add a process and so you're now scouting and exploring and you're gonna assess what I'm saying to see what really works and then inside of your rules inside of your systems your professional what are my recommendations or others are you gonna add what are you doing now to get ready that works do more of that how do you maintain those processes with you know checklists and reminders and things that prevent you from uh, not doing those things. how do you set it up so it's like uh, uh, there's a Japanese term of art um, that prevents you from making bad parts you set up your machine so that it can only make good parts so we can reduce errors and we can drop things that aren't working and we'll just we keep things documented so all of those things go into answering your question so I'm gonna you know part of the answer is what are your what do you do now in areas of your professional practice that make you successful when you go to work do you have a to-do list do you have work in progress do you have a time schedule and a calendar and an executive assistant and an agenda for meetings and standards of, of what we do of how we take notes and uh, daily monthly quarterly reports all of those artifacts go into making making the practice of what you do effective so there's a theory of action of why we do things but then there's what we actually do so we got to make sure that we render that as efficient as possible as painless as possible lower the cost of entry so that it's easier to do the right thing and hard to do the wrong thing so whatever answer you come up with on how to do this, uh, make sure you set it up that way that it doesn't cost more to do it than it's worth, right? So I would just say, look, uh, you need a documented process. Uh, you need some warm-ups. Uh, what do I do? I like that what, as soon as the market's open, uh, you know, the first one of my five movers that moves Uh, I'm on it. If it breaks out or it breaks down, I'm on it with a minimum manageable risk box and just get started. Just jump in the water and start paddling at some point. You know, take a couple deep breaths, do some arm circles, then run down the pier and jump in the water. Don't eat a meal an hour, you know, within an hour of doing that or whatever. I don't even know if that matters. But just get in and start trading and get one in the bank. Make a, make a win. Done. That's all that one has to be is to get started, just to get over it. You know, what do, what do the pro athletes do? I like going to the soccer park an hour before the game starts, and I watch how both teams are warming up. You know, I sit right here at the 18-yard box, 14 rows up, because then I can see the whole field with perspective. And I watch how the home team and the visiting team warm up. What do they do to get ready to play that game? Who are the players? What kind of things do they noodle around with? What kind of skills do they have? What's their energy level? When I was uh, coaching competitive, and to this day, I can tell you who's going to win the game based on how they warm up. Unless they're so evenly matched that it just comes down to a coin flip. But you can tell from the warm-up who's going to be ready to play as soon as they blow the whistle. So what do those, what do those teams do? They do the same thing every time. Here's something I do with our girls. When we're in practice, we have a bunch of little stations and drills and all that other stuff to build our skills when it comes for warm-up in the game there's a couple there's a couple warm-ups that we do 
where the girls come into a little circle, they clap hands, and then they sprint to this one. It's about a five-yard sprint. The only time we ever do that is when we're warming up for the game. And there's a couple other ball control drills that we do that we only do before the actual game because that puts them in the right mindset to be ready. So there's things that we do in practice for skills, and then there's things we do in the warm-up to get the mind right and the body warmed up, ready to trade. So you might think about what kind of ritual can I put in place that tells me this is not just paper trading. I got skin in the game. How do I get skin in the game and respect the game and all that? So I would just say there are things like warm-up, uh, small trades, get a couple quick couple quick hits, um, you know, review uh, key price levels and rehearsals and have a have some flashcards that show your battle drills. Have those handy. Have a little icon that reminds you of of your zero state. Mine is the little uh, compassionate Buddha symbol. So I'm always reminded of gratitude and forgiveness. And then depending on the time frame between the time you ended the last one and you started the new one, there may be some more things that you got to do along the way. There might be some things. Now, if you're taking a vacation, you know, don't think about trading. I personally, I, I can't stop thinking about trading all the time anyway. So if I'm in the car, I'm imagining. To, so even the space when I'm not actively trading, I'm thinking about trading at some level. I just know that about me because I'm kind of a lunatic. So I get that. So I'm always ready to trade or I don't trade. So time, will, pattern, and money. Have you done all four of those things? Have you given yourself enough time to do the warm-up? Are you doing the things you need to do to be in the zero state so that your will to trade is correct? Have you reviewed the patterns and prepared them and rehearsed them? And then, uh, and then money, are you properly capitalized and all that? Are you ready to trade with skin in the game? So all of those things uh, I think are, are useful. Now, specifically, if you go to the uh, go to the tortoisecapital.net site. There's a, about a 10-minute video that goes through this. This is my process, and this was version 0 0.8 on May 8th, 2013, because somebody asked me that question. And so I just said, well, stand by. And in that live workshop, I mapped this out on the whiteboard, and we called it version 0 0.8, fully intending to refine it later. It's still the one I use. Version 0 0.8 is good enough. And it starts with, like I just said, the, the reason to go through all this stuff is so that I'm ready to trade. And being ready to trade starts with how I finished the last trade system. Uh, you know, so I'm trading in here and time will pattern and money and all the different patterns. And then at the close, immediately, what happened, what worked, update my trade journal, starting with forgiveness and gratitude for the trading that I just completed and that I proposed to do. So that's how I get to closure. And that's the first step in getting ready to trade the next session whenever that is. Then the first thing I do is I realize that there's, well, I don't even start over here. I come back here. What do I have to have to be ready to trade? Well, I know that just before I start trading, I got to get into the right mental state. So I got to have time to do that. And I got to have my platform and dashboard 100% ready to go. And I had to understand what the gap statistic was going to be so I knew if it was going to be large, normal, or small because a big one is going to predict a big day and I especially want to be ready for that. So I got to check the gap stat. Uh, 
Then I got to make sure that I had all my rehearsals done so I know what to do on a big gap day. And then I have to make sure my logic chain is in place so that if the SPY is down and the Russell is worse, but the Qs are the worst one of all, it may be that I got to go find Microsoft because that's the worst symbol in the Qs. So my logic chain for how to find the movers quickly that starts from market to sector to target has got to be in place and rehearsed so that I'm ready to trade. And i got to understand what today's market condition is. Is it a Fed day? Are we near a 10-day high? What's the 10-day, 30-day, 150-day gap uh, NDX look like? Is it bull sideways quiet? Uh, is it bull uh, sideways bear? Is it volatile, normal, quiet? What's the market condition for today? What are all the statistics of the market condition? Uh, for each of the things that I propose to trade, I've got to have a trade frame with all the key prices marked out so that I know what to do when price gets to that level, which means I have to have a consolidated list of symbols that I can prepare. And when I'm preparing them, all of the key prices come from these things. I got to know the gap stat, the range stat, the fail stat, signal to noise ratio. Where is it in the holding X number of days Z score? What's the high and low of the previous day? What's the 10 day high and low? Those two are massively important in the range stat. So everything that's on the consolidated watch list that I'm going to have the key prices for, and it's, it's all those statistics. Well, where do I get things for the consolidated watch list? From three sources. There's the standard set of usual suspects, the tradables, the frog champions, that I always prepare no matter what. Then there's any continuation pattern from yesterday where I still hold a position, and I'm already invested in knowing what's going on. So I'm going to already know what their key prices are because I did that as part of the debrief from yesterday. I already have those things. The, I just marched that thing forward one day. And then there's any new candidates from new swing systems or strategies. Well, what are those? Well, that's all the mechanical swing systems. Channeling, overreaction, triple screen, washout, 5DD, 551W, systems, and then also the strategies. Max pain, range compression, auto framer, stealth trades, uh, turboing the blended monthly rebalancing or ETF2. And then there's a couple more that are probably since 2013. But since 2013, this is all I've done every day for 10 years at the start of the day and at the previous day. Then when I'm re then when the market opens, dude, I am so ready to trade. Cuz I've done all my due diligence. That's all done. I just have to be ready to trade. And I'm in the zero state, what's happening, what's working, use the logic chain and then follow the rules. And then how do I map the what does that look like in practice? Well, it looks like this. how I structure my trading day in 30-minute chunks. There's 13 of them. The first 30 minutes are crazy, so I'm not, all I'm trying to do is just warm up and get ready. Just get started. Take a couple shots. And I make sure in the last half hour, I've already made all the decisions i got to make to get my performance, my production things handled, so I can just monkey around in here if I want to. And that means at 30 minutes, I'm doing the quick frog. And at 90 or at 60 minutes, the slow frog, any decisions. In the first 30 minutes, I'm doing morning hooks, WMB3, ready, fire, aim, any continuations from the previous day, any swing trade turbos, uh, SSCs, hybrid frogs, all that crap in the first 30 minutes. Then at 30 minutes and 60 minutes, do a quick check-in of the formal mechanical rules. 
And then by in the first hour, you know, between 30 minutes and 60 minutes, I can start answering the question, what's the morning trend look like? Who are the sector leaders and laggards? And then in the out and then in the next 90 minutes before lunch, I can hit any swing trade entries I'm thinking about using hourly breakouts, adding two positions. And then somewhere around 10 or 10:30 my time, I shift out to the 15 minute and the hourly to see what's going on with those or in this case now the 30 minute I've sort of settled on. Going into the lunch, I'm looking for what are setting up in sideways quiet channels? Are any of the morning trends continuing through lunch? Are there any where, you know, so it's like this, like a cot of two? Or are there some where it went up and now it's starting to fail? Counter trends? Who has the intraday relative strength? So by the end of the lunch period, I know who the winners and losers are. And I know how big the move was. And I think the next two hours, one, two, three, four sessions of 30 minutes, it's either going to be a continuation of the morning trend or it's going to be a reversal of the morning trend like this and then fail collapsing dragon. And the size is going to be half of what the morning trend was. And then somewhere in this second set somewhere in, I'm, I'm looking for logical places to get out of the turbo positions on swing trades so I can just hold the swing trade overnight and just pick some exit that makes sense and just get out of it start reducing my risk before that last half hour so if it's good enough it's good enough it looks like it's done just be done with it and then I'm looking to see hey were there any intraday trades that work so good that I may want to turn them into swing trades by keeping 20% and widening the stop? Maybe. And then in the last hour before the close, I'm framing for any end of day trade. Are there any things that I want to initiate a trade for? Because, you know, it was a, this thing has been up and there was a big gap down and then there was a one, two, three. And you know what? That thing has just been grinding well and it's halfway up the stack of what it gapped and I think tomorrow that thing is likely to go I may end up putting a trade on right near the end of the day on one of the usual suspects that's what I mean by framing for end of day trades so those two processes uh, are the things that I've been doing for 20 years Oops. And uh, it's still good enough. That's what my rehearse. I, what I just did was rehearse. Now I don't have to do that later. I just rehearsed tomorrow by visualizing what I'm. That's my game plan for the day. Could you do the same thing for a week? Yes, you could. Instead of chunks of thirty minutes, maybe those are morning and afternoon, or maybe each one's a day. I don't know. Maybe you want to trade on Mondays and Thursdays because of reasons. Okay. Maybe Friday is going to be a Fed day, so I want it to be special. For, okay, so that's my... So I can frame out my weekly trade the same way. And, and make sure that everything is on my list so I don't miss it. And when I complete it... Yep, I did that. Yep, I did that. Yep, I did... Oh, I didn't do this. So when I'm doing my end-of-week assessment... I know I got to, I got to, why didn't I do that? Did I forget? Oh, if I forgot, it's because I didn't have it on a checklist. And I didn't check my checklist. You know, put a one pound weight around your neck so that you always remember not to forget. You know, whatever it takes. Uh, so if that's my daily, pre now this is, this is essentially my warm up. You're asking me what the warm-up is? That's my warm-up. That's how I get ready to get back into it. And then I just know that the first trade of the day, those first couple ones up in here, that's just to, that's just to get into the game. I'm not betting the farm on those. I'm just trying to warm up. Get a couple wins, a couple losses, awesome. Take a 
0.3 loss in there just to remember how trivial that is. Don't do that by intention, but and if it happens, that's, you get to rehearse taking a small loss. Okay. With live money. Good. You get skin in the game. So that's that's what I would say is a way to think about uh, how to uh, how to prepare. Uh, enough on that one. Yeah, those videos are on the tortoisecapital.net. Um, how to integrate signals. Um, go watch that video of how I, you know, how to read the daily and the weekly. And, and I know he's done that. But here's just a way to do it. You know, I just make sure when I'm going through the report that uh, anything that has hit a mechanical swing pattern, a five-day down, washout, triple screen, 551, channeling, and overreaction, plus any continuation pattern, I make sure that I list those symbols in here. And then anything on my strategies and styles, and any, oh, here's my continuations. So that gives me a lot of symbols. And if I had, like, I don't know, EWW Mexico, and it fired for, like, four different reasons, you can be darn sure I'm, ch I'm, I'm ready for that one. I mean, it's already a frog champion anyway, so I'm going to prepare that. Even if it didn't fire on any of those, I'm preparing Mexico because it's Mexico and Brazil and win uh, casinos and Caterpillar, Home Depot, Devon Energy, Cliff, and U.S. Steel. I'm just doing those no matter what anyhow. I'm also studying all the sectors, but especially tech, materials because of the metals, energy and finance. These other ones, eh, not so much. But those four, I'm always on and ready to go. And then I'm taking a look at the big symbols of market conditions to see how they're doing. And notice that uh, Brazil and Latin America and probably Mexico, they're markets themselves anyway. So they act like mini S&P 500. So you can see the emphasis that I put on Mexico and Brazil. But I'm looking at volatility. I'm looking at the five U.S. markets, large caps, diamonds, tech, mid caps, small caps. I'm looking at the Euro-Asia mix, European 350, China. Then other assets and symbols are treasuries, real estate, gold and silver, oil. So that I'm always ready. And then from this list... If there's not 10 symbols on that list ready to trade tomorrow as sniper targets, I've never not seen 10 symbols ready to go. I mean, there's 10 right there, so I always got 10 ready to go anyhow. Next morning at, at the open, I see who are the big movers up and who are the big movers down from the gap? Off I go. And then the time frame that I showed you. That's how I do it every single day. Every single day. Now, wh what I want to say now is uh, what I just gave you was, the theor was my theory and my practice. You have a theory now and you need to develop your practice of which things do you want to explore and which things do you want to add into your professional practice? Hey, well, I don't have a professional body of knowledge yet. Oh, now you know what you need to start doing. You need to be creating your artifacts and locking those in and then exploring the wider space with your scouts. But this is your main body efforts here. These are the ones where you are exploiting your edges. 
when you're scouting like you're doing now when you take a course, you're exploring the new potential space to decide what's going to get added. And once you add it, you got to lock it in. And this is the one that matters for efficiency. Oh, this matters too because that's how you learn. So if that's your locked in area, each one of these is you exploring different areas and that's how you expand your area of proficiency. So you got to work on your practice. I was just talking with my daughter about don't confuse dating and marriage, but dating, if marriage is your intention to have a lifelong partner, then the way that you date better be connected to your theory of marriage. But once you find a person that meets all your things, it's what you do that turns it into the person. And that's the two of you together. So the way our species is hardwired, if that's the dating and marriage pool, and I have certain ideas and standards and values and identity and all that stuff, and I'm looking to find the one person for me, uh, it's much more likely that there's a lot of people out there that I could end up have had a great life with as a life partner, but only because together we agreed back and forth to do the things that made this lifelong bonds that created an amazing marriage. So that's the practice every day. It's not, oh, if I could just find the right person, oh, I just found something wrong with you, so you're not the right person, so we're cutting it off. No, that's dumb. Marriage is practice. There's a theory of marriage, but it's the practice that makes the difference. You know, it's also fair to say, look, I want to have a lifetime of cooking and trading so that I can eat and enjoy it. But I also am interested in coming up with really good recipes that are efficient ways of getting things done that reliably give me good food. Yeah, but it's not just the recipe. It's all the raw materials. It's the process that you followed and your intention that comes up with the specific meal. Yeah, the recipe matters, and you can get better on those, but it's the practice of cooking and your intention. And then you get to enjoy the meal, and then, of course, you're going to assess because you can't just enjoy things for themselves unless you just completely dissect it. So what I would say then to Hamad is, look, this is a way to get you started thinking about how to integrate those symbols and all those different strategies. But what I would say is uh, start with, come on. To me, the, the idea behind the Kata Challenge, for example, was, look, Brazil and diamonds and just a couple patterns like SSC, uh, Kata 2, Collapsing Dragon, Z3P, Super Pinch, and uh, Hybrid Frog. Those are the five patterns of the Sniper. These are all the reasons why, according to theory, they should be ready to move. So then if I just prepare them, and then I can execute five standard patterns. So five setups, five patterns to trade, five setups to plan and prepare, five patterns to execute correctly. I don't know which one, when if I'm preparing uh, the Russell, I don't know which of the five patterns the sniper is going to shoot and kill until I see the price action going. But I know that he is set up. He's in the box of targets. To get into the box of targets, he's got to be in a critical state ready to trade. And then when he comes out of the box, I'm going to take the pattern that I see. Was it a hybrid frog? Shoot it. Was it an SSC? shoot it. 
Was it a Kata 2? Take it. Was it a Collapsing Dragon? Take it. You know, was it a... Um, is it quieting into a Z3P? Yeah, it started with an SQC. Don't trade that stock. Z3P, kill it. Oh, it has become a super pinch? Really kill that one, because that's an acorn ready to grow up to be an oak tree. So all of those things are ways of manifesting this uh, holistic checklist mentality. And this is what the Romans said. A Roman observer put it this way. Do you think those magnificent victorious legionaries became what they are through some arbitrary stoke of for, stroke of fortune? No. They don't sit around congratulating themselves after every victory. They spend every moment refining and improving their craft. Without apology, they pursue excellence. Each one knows and understands that he alone stands between the empire and oblivion. Watch them. Indeed, they appear to have been born with weapons in their hands. The key is not the will to win. Everybody has that. The will to prepare to win is what's important. That's how I suggest you prepare to win. Or document your process so that it's yours and so it becomes your professional body of knowledge. And use this until you come up with something better. When you got something better, share it. So that's what I want to say about that. Uh, let me cover. I think that was everything I want to cover. And that puts us at 10 o'clock. So I'm going to push end. So this will start processing. And I'll be back in two minutes with more coffee and Creativity 202. Check or hold. That was a pretty good 40 minutes at work, <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> I'll see you in a few, but a few minutes, guys.